Hello, this is Ralph Rio with ARC Advisor Group. I'm just going to give a short webinar about digital twins, uh, specifically for asset management. Well, just a little review of the asset life cycle, and then get into the two types of twins, project and performance, uh, and define them, and then get into the, uh, the applications and benefits for those two types of twins. So uh, ARC's view of asset life cycle involves uh, two main areas of, of biz business processes. Uh, first is the design and build. Uh, this could be for a greenfield, but the vast majority of the time it's for an upgrade where there is the design construction of an asset. Uh, it has its own set of unique business processes uh, and, and key metrics. Uh, usually those metrics are around uh, uh, build on time, in spec, and in budget, and complete that project uh, uh, on time. And then there is a handover uh, for the people who are going to actually operate and maintain that asset, uh, and their metrics are more around performance of the asset, uh, throughput, on time uh, shipments, quality, etc. And again, in the operate and maintain side of the world, there is a bunch of business processes that uh, are specific to that domain area and uh, usually has a, a set of management with deep uh, experience in that area and know how to manage those business processes. Now, uh, in the design and build side of the world, uh, the digital twins typically is involved in simulation. Uh, it could be simula simulation in the, the construction sequence or uh, the uh, uh, plant uh, design to, and, and how it operates uh, to make sure that there are no clashes. Uh, on the operate and maintain side of the world, uh, they have access to real-time data and there are digital twins that uh, monitor the performance of assets and alert when something isn't going quite right. So uh, just to talk about each one of those digital twins in a little bit more detail. Uh, first, the, the uh, parameters of the digital twin in the lower left-hand side. Uh, uh, you know, in this particular graphic, we've got a couple of pumps that are in the plant. There's an upgrade. They add a third pump to increase capacity. So uh, one can simulate the construction sequence to uh, determine, uh, for example, in this case, should the electric motor come go in first? Should the pump go in first? Uh, are there doorways that this has to go through? Do we need to uh, make some modification of the doorway or uh, to, to allow for these materials to enter the room? Etc. So the the construction sequence is one aspect of the the digital twin, uh, and this requires a 3D model, uh, a, a dimensionally accurate one, uh, and then the fourth D is time to simulate uh, how this construction sequence would be done. Uh, it, it also, we have digital twins that get into virtual commissioning. Uh, this is more typical for uh, something like an assembly line where you have materials moving down the assembly line. You want to make sure there aren't clashes uh, between the materials moving and the equipment robots in the case of an auto assembly line, for example. And that the uh, any clashes can be removed uh, before construction actually uh occurs. And uh, all these models were used the as design models. Uh, typically, they come from the 3D uh, design software being used to design the plant. And uh, that software contains the dimensionally accurate models that are then uh, used to simulate the construction sequence of virtual commissioning. Um, in the case of upgrades, where there uh, may not be a uh, 3D model uh, available, it may be older uh, uh, drawings that are uh, on paper or in PDFs. Uh, uh, what 
is often used in that case is 3D laser scanning uh, or more lately photogrammetry to create that 3D model for the uh, as-built conditions uh, for an upgrade. Uh, the third area that this is used in is for training. Uh, so you have a new plant or an upgrade. Uh, it, it doesn't work like it, quite like it did before. It works better. And you can train the operators on uh, how to use it before uh, the turnkey uh, for operate and maintain actually occurs. Now to go to the, to the other side, uh, the other type of uh, digital twin uh, for operate and maintain. Uh, again, uh, below the graphic, typically uh, these involve more uh, analytics and real-time uh, data, whether it be IoT or through the control system. And basically the analytics look at the trends and alerts when there's some degradation. Uh, now, the predominant uh, application has been for predictive maintenance because unplanned downtime is so ugly and, and cause can cascade into uh, much bigger problems. Um, that started oh, around 2015 when uh, IoT platforms with analytics uh, first became uh, available. And uh, these platforms are much more sustainable than custom projects that were done beforehand. Uh, they're less expensive to uh, implement, uh, and the platform uh, is, uh, if things change, it's much easier to uh, sustain the application. Since around 2015, we've seen those applications expand in scope to include process optimization uh, so that you one can improve things like throughput, uh, and and uh, quality of the, the product being made or yield in case of the process industries. Uh, and we're also seeing an extended energy management to uh, lower the cost or improve the efficiency around energy utilization. Now, in terms of benefits, uh, the first bullet there is mainly for the uh, uh, simulation, design and build, or, or project digital twin. Uh, shortening the project has a direct uh, uh, correlation to the revenue being generated. If you can bring the plan on sooner, uh, you can generate more revenue sooner and, and uh, the profits along with that. And that can easily turn into multiple millions of dollars per day uh, in terms of the benefit, which can very easily pay for uh, the simulation uh, software needed to do the project digital twin. Uh, the second bullet here uh, really talks more to the uh, performance digital twin, uh, getting rid of that uh, unplanned downtime or uh, and and uh, the benefits of that because you have less downtime, you can you have more capacity and increased throughput. And as I said before, uh, the, those projects are expanding into the performance ones like quality, yield, energy utilization, et cetera. Uh, in the case of the simulation, the project digital twin, that can continue in some cases uh, into the operator maintain to continue to keep the operator skills at high competency. Uh, you know, there are unusual upset, upsets that can occur in a continuous process, whether it be in bulk chemical or oil and gas. And uh, since they happen rarely, uh, uh, you need something else other than the process itself to maintain those operator skills. And usually that's done through simulation. Well, thank you for listening to me. You see my contact information in the lower right-hand corner there. I'd be delighted to answer any questions anybody has or, or further clarification. Thank you for listening.